Welcome to another episode of The Cotton Floor. And on this episode, I'm joined by two fantastic directors. First, I'm joined by Michelle Bello, um, the director for Small Boy and Flower Girl. Hi, Michelle. Hi, how are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. All I wanted was to get married. And I love him and he loves me. So what's the problem? Make him jealous. Give him a challenge or something. Make him fight for you. You can help me. And I'm also joined by Tokwe Oshi, another amazing director. Um, she's the director of Up North. She's the director of Journey to Self. She's the director of the amazing, amazing, amazing movie, um, MTV Sugar. Series, yeah. <laughs> the series, MTV Sugar. In the journey of life, sometimes it's a struggle to get to where you're going. <laughs> I studied directing um, in America, so I got my bachelor's degree and master's in film directing. Having done TV drama for quite a bit at the point, mm. I knew that what I wanted to do was tell my own stories. So, um, a lot of conversations um, we're going to have today um, about the processes of, of um, you directing, but then let's take it all the way back. Um, what was the experience like um, for you for your first film, your first directing? First directing or first film? Your first, first film. First film. So my first film was a short film, um, The Young Smoker. Um, so I, I think I made The Young Smoker in 2009, if I remember correctly. And I had done some work on TV already. I had directed some episodes on Tinsel. Um, I had directed on The Apprentice Africa, which was a reality show. But having done TV drama for quite a bit at the point, mm. I knew that what I wanted to do was tell my own stories. And what I wanted to do really was to make a film. And you know, like basically you don't feel like you're an artist until you make your film or you make your own story. You know? do all of that so um, it then took me on the journey of now digging up the script that I had in my hands for a little bit to say okay I'm gonna make this and understand also because it was my first I was nervous even though I directed some episodes on TV um, I still felt the nerves and all of that so I chose a script that was just three minutes mm. you know but it was a really impactful story and um, I decided to make it I called on no dash Woods, my DP at the time um, and discussed the story with him and embarked on the whole journey we shot it in one day because obviously there's no budget yeah. <laughs> so we started really early in the morning and we finished um in the evening at about 7 p.m 8 p.m um it was exciting uh, my actors were not actors so to speak there are people around me that you know i said okay are you interested in being in a film and then finding the young boy and then finding the location which was on the streets of where i lived at the time mm. so it's pretty much wide-eyed excitement field for every member of the team the dp myself the actors everybody that came together to do it like let's let's do something for the first time let's make this and we made it and i edited it and i you know and i put it out on youtube you know how it is like with all the nerves like oh. <laughs> <laughs> did you do well i hope i did the right thing i hope i'm not slammed for this did the movie do well a lot of people have really given me um encouraging feedback about the film and mm. you know for me it was sort of the sign that you are called to do this you're not just going to die on tv you can actually make films you know from all the feedback and then it went on and got several awards from film festivals and all of that so that was the experience for the first for me and um, it sort of paved the way for me to get the confidence to now you know get into making more movies and to doing more things and stuff okay michelle what was your first um directing experience like well, I studied directing um, in America, so I got my bachelor's degree and master's in film directing. Um, so I did a lot of short films during my course, but my first like official professional film was Small Boy, um, which I shot right after in uh, 2007. Mm -hmm. um, I was working with Madame Mo Abudu, Ebony Life TV. That was my first professional job in the industry. Um, and I was one of her first associate producers. And so I left that job to start my own production company, Blue Star Entertainment, and shot Small Boy. And I was just like, you know, I was young, you know, at the time, I think I was like 24 at the time. I was just full of passion. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna die with my first movie, can't wait. 
and we shot it in a butometa in two weeks and people thought i was crazy they'd be like oh this oibo girl <laughs> <laughs> running around you know she you know um it was but it was an incredible experience i mean we, we went through all kinds of things from area boy gang wars and we had to like change locations last minute you know to um cast dropping out last minute like all kinds of things um but i loved like every minute of it um it was an incredible experience and um what was interesting is that even though i was young at the time you know full of passion and creativity and everything everyone respected that so both the cast and crew were all on board you know i had like akin lewis at the time Norbert young who were like major stars back then um Ajita dede played the lead even the small boy he ended up winning the ama award mm -hmm. for best young child actor and it was his first time in a movie um and he was 10 at the time and so yeah it was, it was just an incredible experience great what's up daddy yo You will not be welcome in this house until you have completed your NYC in Bauchi. This is not the kind of trip we want to remember. How have you maintained creative focus, um, mm -hmm. navigating the different hurdles of, of creating a film, like the actors and all of that? Well, because sometimes actors could be messy, I think. Everything could be messy. <laughs> I've been shooting in Nigeria, so it's one of the things, like Michelle said, that you know we have had to learn how to deal with. You have to understand that shooting in Nigeria is not the same as shooting anywhere else in the world. Mm -hmm. And um, every single part of the production is designed to kill you. <laughs> because <laughs> you're battling everything from um, environmental sound at your location. You know, there's someone shouting outside. You have to deal with that. There's an actor who doesn't show up or who comes late. Or there's some hair. You know, there's always something going on. So, I mean, literally for me, I've always practiced in this environment. I'm always aware that these things exist. So, I mean, the best thing for you or anybody who means business is to come prepared. Mm. You come prepared for what you can control. Mm. And then you also come prepared for that which you cannot control and have like 10 contingency plans, you know, which is mm. how it works. You try to focus being just a director on set. But you find that most of the time we're always directing and producing even when there's a producer even when you're just hired to be a director there's always something that needs your attention or that you know in my situation probably the producer is not as experienced as i am and their way to solve a problem might be to go the one hour route mm -hmm. and i might just know the five minute route that was solving i'm like okay you know what just do this do this do this and we'll fix it you know and mm -hmm. that happens so i mean literally as i experience here in nigeria as directors we are not okay <laughs> we are not okay we're used to working under strenuous conditions mm. so you just have to find your way to keep your creative focus to you know stay in the moment you know like for me every second when i get up and i come back it's always back to that script which already has like everything i want to do apart from it being in my head you still also have you know your line script you have everything on the script there so you you go to the craziness you come back to it you stay in the moment you just so I have to find your balance, otherwise you're gonna just, you know, make a whole mess of everything. So we find our way. We we, we try to make it work. We What's your own work. process? Um, process. from where to where? No, like on set or yeah, from yeah, from the whole process from script to script. Okay, so uh, uh, the first thing for me is becoming one with the story. Um, this is talking about when the story doesn't come from me. Mm. So I'm being offered the script to direct. The first thing to, to do is to find myself in there. If I connect to the story, then I accept to direct it. If I do not find myself in there, like it doesn't connect, then it's not a story I'm meant to direct because I feel like it wouldn't speak to me. Okay. So then goes the process of reading the script about five, six times, because um, each time I read, I see something different. I make notes. Um, I'm not even lining the script yet. I'm not even talking about shots yet. It's, it's just getting to know the characters mm. in depth, their backstory, mm. creating for them, if none existed already. You know, it's basically getting into the core of everything and then deciding, okay, how am I going to tell the story? You know, design that, design the pr production itself, which brings me to doing a treatment of this is, you know, how I want it to look. Mm. Then I think about shots. I think about you know, theme, I think about color, I think about, you know, 
how I want each character to be, the um, defining traits of each character. Are they going to be quirky or whatever, you know? Basically building blocks here and there of how to put it all together because this is then what I share with my team. Because if there's no blueprint, there's nothing to share. And that's basically the job of a director. That's how you earn the title a top leadership film because everything is meant to come from mm. you. Mm. What the film looks like, the look and feel, the colors, everything you see. So I then share this with my HODs, with the production designer, mm -hmm. discuss with them, you know, what colors, what, what I'm thinking about, what kind of movie I'm trying to make. Mm -hmm. then I hand that to him, he or she comes back with, you know, what their suggestions are, or their Bible, or whatever. I do the same thing with the wardrobe mistress. Basically with the core team, the heads of departments, wardrobe, makeup, I have the same conversations with each one of them, sharing my vision, mm -hmm. um, and letting them know what I'm trying to do. What 